أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل ادعوا الله أو ادعوا الرحمن أيا ما تدعو فله الأسماء الحسنى my dear brothers and sisters everywhere, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In continuation with our last topic regarding the conditions and the protocols of accepting our prayers, we will continue in the second part. Last time, we, cover, we covered a few conditions in which, in which we said that these need to be met in order for the possibility of accepting our prayers and calls when we ask the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, we will continue, tonight we will continue with the same subject. Another condition for accepting our prayers is that our prayers should be coupled with, de with deeds. It's a conjugate of prayers and actions. It cannot be only prayers by themselves. We cannot say, since the month of Ramadan is month of a prayers, a great opportunity for accepting our calls and our needs. The Almighty Allah has opened the, the doors of heaven and He is answering our calls. So let's just put the prayer mat, lay down the prayer mat, and we sit on the prayer mat and then just keep asking and supplicating although this action is necessary and essential yet it is not sufficient by itself it is still needing action there is always an action should be coupled with this one if you remember at the beginning of the nights of ramadan we have talked about sunnatullah the tradition of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the laws of a creation, the divine laws of a creation. And we said that this is how God has set up the universe. This universe doesn't work without a cause. Everything, there must be a cause. There is a cause and there is an effect to that. So the tradition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we should work. We should exert our efforts and do something. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْ لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى Human being would not reap anything but what, what he has earned it, what he has worked hard toward it. If he has worked hard toward it, he will earn that thing. So it is always coupled with the action. If someone who's sick, he cannot say, let me just pray without going to the doctor, visiting the doctor. Or the student cannot say, in order for me to get an A, let's just pray and sit on the prayer mat and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant me A without taking the effort, without exerting his energy and studying hard in order to achieve it. The same way a parent cannot ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have a righteous children without taking the effort of upbringing them, of working hard to teach them, to make them learn the ethics and moral codes. Just by prayers themselves, it will not help. It would not be conducive. They must be coupled with actions. One day a man came to Al Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam. And he said that I have heard somebody who's saying, La aqudanna fi bayti, wala usalliyanna wala asumanna wala wala abadan. I will stay in my home, in the quarters of my home. I pray and observe fasting and do my supplications. Fa'amma rizqi, fasayatini. God will send my subsistence. God will send my nourishment. I don't, I don't need to work hard. The Imam alayhi salam says, هذا أحد الثلاثة الذين لا يستجاب له. He's one of those 
that God would not answer his call. Why? Because you have to go and work. If it were only by prayers and supplications, then the Prophet, peace be upon him, would stay on his prayer mat in front of Masjid al-Haram. Then he would pray that God would eliminate all his enemies and God would conquer all the lands for him and give him ready to him as the lands of Islam. He didn't have to struggle. To struggle. He didn't have to go into battles and fight the enemies. He didn't have to go and establish the Islamic nation. Meanwhile, he didn't have to lose his companions and to see his uncle Hamza, for example, or other relatives are getting martyred if it were only had to do with the prayers. Why did he have to go and struggle and fight and work hard? Because always prayers are coupled with hard work. There always must be this conjugate presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That at the same time, O oh Lord, I'm asking you, I need your help and your assistance to fulfill my needs. I'm also working hard, actively working in order to achieve it. Here the Prophet tells Abu Dhar, tells Abu Dhar, Ya Abu Dhar, مثل الذي يدعو بغير عمل كمثل الذي يرمي بغير وتر Somebody who prays without taking any action is like someone who throws an arrow, but that arrow does not have a string. Well, how is that possible? It's not possible at all. So those two things always have to be together. The second condition is avoiding sins. Sins are the roadblocks between us and our Lord. It is those sins that stop our prayers short from getting to the heavens. As Al Imam Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, Allahumma ghfir li al-dhunub al-lati tahbis al-dua. O the Lord, forgive those sins of me that prevent my prayers to reach you, to get close to you. It is narrated that one day, Musa ibn Imran, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was walking and noticed someone who is praying for hours and hours. He goes back and see that this man is prostrating and praying. He said, لو كانت حاجتي بيد, لو كانت حاجته بيدي لقضيتها. If its need was in my hand, then I have fulfilled it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered Musa, told him, لو سجد حتى ينقطع عنقه. If this man prostrate until his neck is broken into pieces, ما استجبت له. I would not answer him. حتى يتحول عما أكرهه إلى ما أحب. Until he changes from what I dislike to something that I like. So sins are the greatest obstacles between us and our Lord. Inshallah, on the next night, we will dedicate the entire topic about this effect. How sins cut us short from getting to our Lord. The third condition and third effect of our prayers is when we do them collectively. When we sit all together, hand in hand, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our desires to be met. This amman yujibu al-muttarra idha da'a will have a great effect when many people sitting together and praying. That will have a very resounding effect. It will have a monumental change in our status quo. As the Imam alayhi salam says, ما من رهطنا الإمام الصادق says ما من رهط أربعين رجلا اجتمعوا ودعوا الله عز وجل في أمر إلا استجاب لهم. If forty people get together and then they ask the Almighty for something that they need desperately, the Almighty will answer them. He will be calling them. 
this beautiful dua, dua Joshan al Kabir, when the people said together and they all together recite this beautiful word, Subhanaka ya la ilaha illa and Al Ghoth Al Ghoth, Khalasna min al Nari ya Rab. This will have a tremendous effect. You will see the effect of your prayers immediately. Al Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam again, he says, Kana abi. إذا حزنه أمر دع النساء والصبيان ثم دعا وأمنوا. If something has bothered him, الإمام الباقر, if something has bothered him, he will call upon the ladies and the children. He gather them all together at once, and then he ask for his desires from Allah سبحانه وتعالى, and then they say آمين. When they say آمين all together, they answer. The, the prayer will be answered. The other effect is spelling and articulating your need. The Almighty knows our needs. In the dua, we say, Oh you, the Lord, you know those who are, you know what's inside the heart of those who are silent, who do not say, anything he knows everything in our heart yet he loves to hear it from us that we articulate it we mention it this mere mentioning of the prayers when we say them it will strengthen the bond it will increase the bond and increases the relationship and strengthen the relationship between us and the almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially when we insist on the prayers, when we keep, keep repeating those prayers again and again, when we keep asking our needs over and over, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, God would love those who keep insisting, who insist upon their demands, who insist upon their need from the Almighty. It is hated that we ask our need from other people and we keep asking and asking. But from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's very desired that you keep repeating the same over and over. Again, Al-Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam says, Wallah la yulihu abdun ala Allah azza wa jal illa istajaba lahu. Whenever a servant, a caller, keep begging and begging and begging the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God will answer him. God will say that this man is in desperate situation. This person needs that thing. Therefore, he answer his call. And lastly, the last effect is the timing of the prayers. Everything has its own time. Every field has its own season. And the time of the prayer, the best time of the prayers is in the middle of the nights. When everybody is at sleep, when no one can hear you, no eyes can watch you, no ears can hear what you say, that is the best time because there is only one entity that can hear, listen and see you, listen to you and see you. And that is the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He tells his Prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he tells him, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, qum al-layla illa qalila. Stand up in front of me during the middle of night. Nusfahu aw inqus minhu qalila, aw zid alayhi, wa rattil al-Qur'ana tartila. Take, partake half of the night where you stand in front of me, stand up in front of me and perform your prayers. That is the desire, the best desire time. In another verse, in another hadith narration, it is narrated from the Al Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam. He says that one day the Lord is telling Musa ibn Imran, telling him, Ya ibn Imran, Kadiba man za'ama annahu yuhubbuni. فَإِذَا جَنَّ اللَّيْلِ نَامَ عَنِّي It is a liar who claims that he loves me 
But when the night comes, he sleeps. Then he says, أَلَيْسَ كُلُّ مُحِبٍ يُحِبُّ, يحب خَلْوَةَ حَبِيبِهِ Wouldn't every lover would like to be alone with his beloved? Isn't it a time that every lover seeks to be alone with his beloved? My lovers, the Lord says, those who loves me, love me, it's during the middle of the night when they can come and tell me and ask me, that is the best night, that's the best time when I will also answer them. We will come back after this break. يا من أظهر الجميل يا من ستر القبيح يا من لم يؤاخذ بالجريرة يا من لم يهتك الست يا عظيم العاف يا حسن التجاوز يا واسع المغفرة يا باسط اليدين بالرحمة يا صاحب كل نجوى يا منتهى كل شكوى سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا ذا النعمة السابغة يا ذا الرحمة الواسعة يا ذا المنة السابقة يا ذا الحكمة البالغة يا ذا القدرة الكاملة يا ذا الحجة القاطعة يا ذا الكرامة الظاهرة يا ذا العزة الدائمة يا ذا القوة المتينة يا ذا العظمة المنيعة سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا بديع السماوات يا جاعل الظلمات يا راحم العبرات يا مقيل العثرات يا ساتر العورات يا محيي الأموات يا منزل الآيات يا مضعف الحسنات يا ماحي السيئات يا شديد النقمات سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب In continuation with Dua Joshan Al Kabir, tonight we will be covering segment number 22, 23, and 24. The theme for segment 22 is to conceal vice and reveal virtue. 
as it goes like this. Ya man azhar al-jameel, ya man satar al-qabih, wa ya man lam yu'akhid bil-jarira, wa ya man lam yahtik al-sitr, ya azim al-af, ya hasan al-tajawuz, ya wasi' al-maghfira, ya basit al-yadayn bil-rahmah, ya sahib kulli najwa, wa ya muntaha kulli shakwa, subhanaka ya ilaha, la ilaha illa ant, al-ghawth al-ghawth, خلصنا من النار يا رب. as it says, O who who reveals virtue, he who conceals vice, he who does not call to severe account for sins, he who does not disclose the disgrace of his servants, he who is the best of forgivers, he who overlooks errancy, he whose forgiveness extend over all, he whose hands are stretched forth in mercy, he who knows all secrets, he to whom all complaints are directed. The beautiful phrase, Ya man adhar al-jameel wa satar al-qabir. Though who reveals virtue and conceals the vice. One of the beautiful attributes of the Almighty, despite that he knows everything, he has seen our wrongdoing and our sins, but he reveals the virtue and he conceals the vice. Our mistakes, our sins that we constantly repeat and incur, they are all kept hidden. But when we do good thing, God would reveal that. will make it known to people. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, in the beautiful phrase of Dua Kumail, he says this, وَكَمْ مِنْ ثَنَاءٍ جَمِيلٍ لَسْتُ أَهْلًا لَهُ نَشَرْتَ How many beautiful traits and features that I don't deserve, that I never earned them by myself, but you have disperse them about me in the community. People have associated me with those wonderful things. Or concealing the bad things. Al-Imam Al-Mahdi alayhi salam in Dua Al-Iftitah, the elegant Dua that we recite every night in the holy month of Ramadan, he says, فَكَمْ يَا إِلَهِ مِنْ قُرْبَةٍ قَدْ فَرَّجْتَهَا وَهُمُومٍ قد كشفتها وعثرة قد أقلتها ورحمة قد نشرتها You conceal, you take care of the wrongdoing while you disperse, you make it known the good things. When we, when we do good things, God would reveal it. The attribute of God is the revealer of the virtue while concealer of the vice. This is how God wants us to emulate him, that we reveal the virtue of others, while we should conceal the vice of others. Why? For the sake of society. The Almighty wants that we live in a safe and tranquil community. Community will not have its security of people's reputation and people's stance are ruined. When people's reputations are ruined, their security is also ruined. Then there is no sanctity to the society, to the community. So anything that jeopardizes people's reputation, people's stance, Quran and Islam makes it forbidden. For example, such as keeping people under surveillance and spying, or backbiting, or following and see what people do in order to catch their mistake and then reveal it. As the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا Our emotion is also sanctified. Our feelings is also sanctified. Therefore, God doesn't want even the feeling of people 
to be hurt by backbite biting by getting spied on so later on they will be blackmailed or their vice is revealed God would want those things to be concealed he in fact warns against someone who reveals the mistakes and the vice of the believers of the good people in the community he says in الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةَ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ They will receive their punishment. Those people who stalk people to hunt people to catch their mistakes and then reveal their mistake so vice can be dispersed in the community, God would punish them will punish them in this life before the hereafter. The Prophet, peace be upon him, on the Hajjat al wada on the day of Arafah, he calls upon people and war them and says, Ya ma'ashara man aslama bi lisanih wa lam yuslim bi qalbih la tatabba' la tatabba'u atharat al-muslimin fa innahu man tatabba'a atharat al-muslimin yatatabba'u Allah أثاراته ومن تتبع الله أثاراته يفضحه. O people, do not seek to find the stumbles, the lapses and errors of your fellow and your brothers. Do not do this, because if you do this, the Almighty, the Almighty will chase you out to reveal your bad secrets. Your vices that you do in, con in, 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 in private moments, in a private conditions, God will reveal those. And someone that God would reveal, he will not have any reputation anymore, any good stance in the society. In another narration by Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, says, Inna aqraba ma yakoon al-abd ila al-kufr the closest thing that somebody becomes to being a kafir is that person and you rajulu rajula ala deen that he bring brothers of him he becomes a friend of people he befriends of people not for the sake of a friendship rather to catch their mistakes and then reveal them later on. This person is considered to be a kafir. Even if he by tongue says the shahadatain, says that there is no God but the Almighty and there is no Prophet and the Prophet is the Messenger of Allah, yet this person is considered to be kafir. Why? Because God wants us to be good with each other. He wants to have a tranquil, and peaceful society and then the prophet peace be upon him says whoever conceals the mistakes of his brethren god will conceal his lapses his mistakes man satara ala muslimin satarahu allah fi dunya wal akhirah in both places in this life your mistakes will be concealed and in the hereafter, your mistakes also will be concealed. As the hadith says, In Allah Ta'ala, Ida Satara ala Abdin Auratahu fid dunya, Fahwa akramu man an yakshifaha fil akhirah. If he conceals our sins in this life, well, for sure he will conceal our mistakes in the hereafter. If in this life, that's so cheap, so worthless, worthless. God conceals our mistakes. He will also conceal our mistake in the hereafter. Segment number 23, where the theme is to get more beneficence. It says, Ya the ni'mat al-sabigha, ya the rahmat al-wasi'a. يا ذا المنة السابقة يا ذا الحكمة البالغة 
يا ذا القدرة الكاملة يا ذا الحجة القاطعة يا ذا الكرامة الظاهرة يا ذا العزة الدائمة يا ذا القوة المتينة يا ذا العظمة المنيعة The translation The master of the countless blessings O oh, the master of limitless mercy The master The master surpassing all obligation Master of perfect wisdom Master of infinite might Infinite might Master of the decisive argument Master Master of manifest miracle Master of a perpetual prestige Master of a great strength Master of unsurpassable glory The words يا ذا القدرة الكاملة يا ذا الرحمة الواسعة ويا ذا المنة السابقة The mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى يا ذا النعمة السابقة يا ذا المنة يا ذا الرحمة الواسعة The mercy of the Almighty and the blessing of Almighty is surpassing is complete and sufficient He doesn't give only one blessing and leave us in search of another if he give us eyes and stomachs and hearings he also give us the means to fulfill these needs he will fulfill our stomachs he will help us to gain the needs and to gain the requirements for our needs his blessings is always surpassing our needs he doesn't leave us in search of other needs when he endow people with his blessings he makes sure that the blessing is complete and sufficient when again when he creates a stomach he brings edible food that we fill our stomach when we when he creates the sensitive body he also makes sure that there is shelter and there is a dress that we can protect ourselves with. Then the segment number 24, to receive God's bliss. Ya Rahim al-Abarat. It says, Ya Badi'a al-Samawat, Ya Ja'il al-Zulumat, Ya Rahim al-Abarat, Ya Muqeel al-Atharat, Ya Satir al-Awrat, Ya Muhyi al-Amwat, يا منزل الآيات يا مضعف الحسنات يا ماحي السيئات يا شديد النقمات One of the beautiful things of the, of the one of the beautiful attributes of the Almighty is that He is merciful to those who weep One of the most potent strategies that the servants use in order to secure the forgiveness and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our humility and subordination and weeping in the middle of the prayers. The minutes that you weep, God will forgive those tears. Why? Because weeping doesn't come spontaneously. Rather, it comes when the heart is broken. When we reckon our mistakes when we recognize what kind of wrongdoing we have committed and when we feel the pain when we have remorse when we feel that there is no way out but returning to him when the heart breaks tears come down therefore you see the forgiveness of God is available at the minute that tears come down when we are in our humility when we are in our subordination why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us or bestow his mercy on us when we are humiliated does he have a vested interest to see us humiliated no but the path of mercy goes through tears and humiliation in the same way as the path of healing and curement of a chronically ill person goes 
through the harsh course of a treatment that he follows the doctor that he prescribed to him. The doctor doesn't have a vested interest to see the patient suffering. He doesn't want to give harsh treatment for the patient for the sake of its harshness. He wouldn't be pleased to see the patient in pain when he take the treatment. But in order for the patient to be healed, he has to take this harsh treatment, to take the very difficult course of a treatment. The same way, to clinch into forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his remission, we have to show our subordination and our humility. And this is done when our tears come down, when we feel that we are humiliated in the front of the Lord. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and bestow his blessing upon us that we have more of a broken heart so we return to him. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wonder at the miser who is speeding towards the very destitution from which he wants to run away and misses the very ease of life which he covets. Consequently, he passes his life in this world like the destitute, but will have to render an account in the next world like the rich. I wonder at the proud man who was just a drop of semen the other day and will turn into a corpse tomorrow. I wonder at the man who doubts Allah although he sees his creations. I wonder at him who has forgotten death although he sees people dying. I wonder at him who denies the second life although he has seen the first life. I wonder at him who inhabits this transient abode but ignores the everlasting abode.